This is Baja SAE Shop Talk, the official podcast of the Baja SAE series. Hey everybody, welcome to Shop Talk, the Baja SAE podcast. I'm Mike Sorg, the video and the podcast producer with the SAE CDS series. And today we are getting ready to go to Louisville for the Baja SAE Louisville event coming up here in, as of this recording, just, just, about, a, just about a week out here, uh, the second event for the validation events this year. I have with me on the line, Brad Arlinghouse and Alex Bays. Uh, how you doing, guys? Doing pretty good. Uh, we're doing great. So first, let's get to know you a little bit. Uh, Brad, tell me, w- what's your background with uh, the Baja program? And, uh, and tell me a little bit of what you're doing now. How much time do you got? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's a beautiful thing about podcasting. Uh, well, if we got time. Uh, so a- Alex and I are both alumni from the University of Louisville, and we're on the team together uh, from like the 2010 to 2014 time frame. My background primarily well on the team was drivetrain design, a little bit of overall system integration work in the design side of things, a handful of fabrication here and there, lots of driving. I like to drive at the competitions. You know, we did we did pretty well. Uh, the typical transition for a UofL Baja alumni is to move on to hosting a race that we host every fall in Louisville. And uh, that's kind of where... I've been since uh, occasionally volunteering at competitions as a design judge or a live stream announcer. I've done that a couple of times. That's been interesting. Yeah, lots of lots of Baja experience. This is definitely not my first rodeo. How about you, Alex? Yeah, so like Brad said, we went to school together. Um, Baja for me kind of started in 2008. Brad likes to hide the fact that he was on formula for a few years. But yeah, so uh, 2008 is when I started Baja all the way through grad school and and graduated in 2014. You know, did design work from basically touching every part of the car but drivetrain. And then, yeah, like Brad said, kind of progressed. I think most everyone who's listening to this probably knows who Brad and I are. We've been running Midnight Mayhem for the last six or seven years now and looking forward to getting into the Baja SA Louisville. Excellent. So let's get into it. First of all, why Louisville? Is this a first time for Louisville? So yeah, this is a, a first time event for, for Baja SAE in Louisville. Um, like I mentioned, we, we've we been hosting Midnight Mayhem since 2008. And, and the alumni that started it at the time, that was kind of their end goal and their dream was to use Mayhem as the stepping stone into an official SAE event. I don't think anyone would have thought that it would have taken 12 years and then an additional year for for COVID to make it happen, um, but but we're here now. It, Midnight Mayhem was a completely independent event. It was not an SAE affiliated event of anything. It was just something that you guys did on your own, right? Yeah, it, it started as kind of a. It, there's several of those that pop up throughout uh, the fall time event. It's a great opportunity to, you know, introduce new students who have just come into their their freshman uh, fall semester to what Baja is all about. It's also you know, right in the prime design space or design period for the team. So it's a great time to come out and, and test new designs and improve and those out for um, the competitions that come in the next spring. And so, like Brad mentioned, both of us, we've done design judging for the last several years at at least one event. And it's it's very common now to hear we tested this at Midnight Mayhem, uh, which is kind of cool for us to hear. But but yeah, it's really just a, a fun, relaxed environment for people to, to show what Baja is all about and, and test new designs. That's awesome. I, I know Midnight Mayhem is something that I've seen teachers for and ho- heard uh, some stories about over the years since I've been uh, working with the Baja program. So it's, it's good to see uh, you guys uh, uh, getting something there in the area for it. So tell me, you know, why, why Drop Forge? Uh, you know, what is this uh, what is this venue like that we're going to be at? Well, going back to our, our Midnight Mayhem days, you know, we've we've kind of evaluated what it takes for a site to host a competition and the SAE events are it, it takes quite a bit more sight than it does to do these off-season unofficial races that, that you see pop up in the, uh, the fall. So we needed to look for a site that had all the features that we liked, you know, variability in terrain, um, space, space to park trailers, space to um, fit 100 teams on site, space for tech, space for static events, space for dynamic events to have a variety for our tracks, uh, try to make the event as, as interesting as possible. Uh, in addition, you know, we, we like to do things with a little bit of flair 
So we didn't want to just do another motocross style track somewhere out in the countryside for our event. You know, we wanted to do something a little unique. And that's kind of what brought us to the, the Drop Forge Proving Grounds is what we're calling it. It used to be the old Kentucky Trailer Park. And we didn't really care for the Kentucky Trailer Park name uh, as the name for our site. We thought it was a little uh, derogatory, let's say. Uh, so uh, we opted to, you know, it, there's a, a, a nice building on site um, that I guess is a part of the historic register. So it, that's why it didn't get knocked down with the rest of the Kentucky Trailer facility uh, when they moved out several years ago. So the university owns it through somehow um, they're planning to eventually expand campus onto it. But until then we asked if we could race, they said, mm, we don't know. And that started our process of figuring out how to do that. Um, I know Alex was really involved in that. He can probably toss a lot more history in. Yeah. So that, that building that Brad's talking about, it's, it's actually called the drop forge shop and it's painted on the roof of the building. And so that's where the name drop forge proving grounds come from. But when Brad and I were in, were in school at UofL, um, there were buildings on this site and it was actually a functioning business where Kentucky trailer, which they've now moved to another location within Louisville, but they, they build, um, you know, trailers for like 53 foot semis and, and race teams and all they're a pretty well-known brand internationally. Um, they used to operate out of there and they did for almost a hundred years, I believe. And so the university bought that land, like Brad said, knocked all the buildings down. I think we were probably halfway through our college careers at that point when they knocked the buildings down and with this plan of, yeah, putting in a brand new engineering campus and bringing in all these businesses and things like that. And just due to finances and whatever has happened within the university, um, that hasn't happened yet. And so as we were looking for um, a potential site to try and host uh, an SAE event because the places that we had been hosting Mayhem at in the past, we, we knew were too small when it came to incorporating uh, really the static event side of things um, and then adding about another 30 teams on from what Mayhem typically had. Um, we saw we, we were looking around Louisville and, and saw this big space right next to campus. We're like, well, it's empty. No one's been using it. Maybe all we can do is ask, and the worst they can say is no. Um, and so a couple of years ago that we, we asked the question, they said, yeah, sure, why not? And we spent the summer of 2019 building a, a track from the ground up. So it's, it's pretty unique in the fact that I can think of only a handful of places, um, Auburn and Kansas come to mind, that really have a, a purpose-built Baja course um, that they use for their events. You, you remember that, yeah, sure, being a lot easier to get than I do. I, I thought we had to jump through some hoops to be able to host an event on the site. We're trying to keep this short, Brad. Uh, yeah. Well, they asked about our Baja history, so I figured it must be, uh, we must have some time. That is true. We did open that up, didn't we? So it is interesting because I am looking at the map as uh, again as we're talking about it, the address. Like it is like this is again we going from Arizona that was like really out there uh, in the middle of nowhere to like this is it looks like you are square in the middle of Louisville here. So that's pretty incredible. But so so with that, you know, obviously we are in the middle of, of town for this, right? And that's going to come up with uh, different logistics. So what are what are kind of the uh, the limitations logistics you know you know where's where's everybody parking you know what what needs to be of concern when teams are lining up there for the first time for competition Yeah so I think you know for a lot of these teams that are coming uh, last I saw we have about 78 still registered I believe most of them have probably been to Midnight Mayhem in 2019 and so they're going to be fairly familiar with the space which is good but for those that haven't and just to reiterate kind of what's maybe different or what's the same as before cuz some of it is different some of the same Parking, we'll have, um, there's a there's a parking lot on the north side of, of the site. Um, it's it, When you download our map, you'll see it uh, clearly labeled there. That's where all of the students will be parking. Uh, our volunteers will be parking on property. Right now, we're working through kind of finalizing all those details with, with UofL on what that's going to entail, but likely there is going to be a, a fee to, to park in that, that space. So with that being said, we're also working on trying to understand if we've got enough room on site to maybe give every team at least one car that can park on on the Drop Forge Proving Grounds property um, free of charge. So we'll, we're working through that this week. Be looking out on the app and things like that. We'll make that announcement um, as we get closer to the event with the final 
firm plan on what parking is looking like. But but we do have plenty of space. Um, it's marked on the map today, and, and that's kind of what parking looks like there. Uh, other things that because of the par- proximity to and being downtown um, is food. I know there's a lot, always questions about is there going to be food provided on site, all that kind of stuff. Um, the, the short answer is no, we're not providing food on site. And, and the reason for that is we're right in the middle of town. Like there's like 20 different restaurants you can go to pretty quickly within a couple miles of campus. Um, and, and we're also going to be offering a spot for, for teams to grill on site. If they were, if they'd rather go to the grocery store, um, buy some food and then bring it and cook it on site. You can totally do that too. And again, just looking at the map real place, I see a Chinese place like across the street <laughs> practically. So, yeah. you know, like that's how close we are. And I think you got a Papa John's around the corner. So it's, it's, you're pretty, yeah. you're pretty good there. There's definitely yeah, and, food options. Not, and uh, we're going to, I guess we'll be providing a list of some of our favorite local places in the welcome packet, quick and easy local places for, for lunch. Uh, we, some of our more favorite places for evening, uh, maybe we won't include on the welcome packet. So along with that, uh, I know this isn't on the list, but I know I know things can get pretty hot and heavy as they're, uh, they're, everybody's uh, kind of working away there. Uh, will, will there be any issues getting any Grubhub or Uber Eats into the facility, I suppose? Uh, no, there shouldn't be. We, we uh, for, for Mayhem a couple of years ago, we had all the food for our volunteers delivered onto, onto the site and they didn't have any problems finding it. So that should be uh, a doable thing. Now, this is a question I was asked multiple times in uh, Arizona as I was walking around with my big uh, uh, video camera there uh, shooting for the highlights. Um, but there is no planned live stream of the event itself, correct? Yes, we will not be we will not be having a live stream at uh, Baja SA Louisville. Uh, we took the mentality of trying to make organizing and setting up the competition as simple as possible. The old uh, keep it simple, stupid approach to this, to, just to make sure everything runs smoothly. And the live stream is one of those things that gets gets cut just because of the sheer uh, work volume associated with it. it. It already, you have your already overstressed volunteers and organizers running around and the, the volume of work to put on a live stream is, is quite high for, uh, you know, what we, we get out of it. So, our alternative is going to be, you know, we, we've got a lot of students coming here. Everyone's got a cell phone in their pocket. You know, let's let's make an effort to make some social media posts. We'll use our Baja Louisville hashtags. Um, you know, I, I don't know what they are off the top of my head. My guess is it's going to be hashtag Baja SAE, hashtag Baja Louisville. But, you know, we'll have signs. We'll let you know. You know, we can work on improving the media coming out of our event. I know that was I, I was sitting in my desk trying to figure out who's winning Arizona, what's going on in Arizona, getting tidbits here and there. Uh, I'd love to see more media coming out of Louisville real time. Uh, let's talk about weather for a minute. Uh, so again, if, if those that may have joined us in Arizona, you know, we had the hot and dusty going on. What can we expect out of Louisville? Yeah. So uh, welcome to Kentucky where the weather is made up. Um <laughs> Right now, the forecast is showing about 30% chance of, of scattered thunderstorms all week uh, mm-hmm. and all the way through the weekend. But, I mean, seriously, it, it could snow for all we know. Um, Kentucky weather likes to change on a dime. Um, for those who've been to, to multiple mayhems, you know, they're always right around the end of, end of September. And we've had it be 95 degrees. Uh, we've also had it snow. So, um, you know, it's... It, the weather in Kentucky is, is always variable. So plan for a little bit of everything. <laughs> it's that classic Midwest unpredictability with the yeah. weather, right? Yeah. 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 It's that time of the, that time of the season in Kentucky where you really don't know what you're going to get. It's not, it's not cold enough to be cold all the time. It's not hot enough to be hot all the time. And that leads you to uh, a lot of weather patterns rolling in kind of unpredictably. We've mm-hmm. been watching the weather now, now that they're showing it in the 10 day forecast, we've been watching it every day and it's just, it's different. It hasn't told us really, it might rain as, as all it's really said, but, uh, it's, it's Baja, right? So when they say it might rain, it's either going to be very dry and dusty, or it's going to be very rainy and wet and muddy. So I, I we, we really don't know what we're going to get. Yeah. And then, uh, looking at Brad's notes here for, for the podcast, uh, we've also got the potential of one biblical plague. So for those who aren't around the Midwest, um, this is the 17-year cycle of cicada season, and I think when we last looked, peak season is supposed to be the week that we're there, 
we're hoping that since it's been cooler, most really for the last month, it's been cooler than expected. Um, we're hoping they're kind of still hibernating and not coming out yet, but we could potentially see a lot of cicadas around. Is there is there concern with the cicadas? Anything people need to watch out for, or is it just there's a lot of them and they're really loud? Well, they're really loud. Uh, there's a lot of them, and they their mating call sounds like a single cylinder lawnmower engine, mm-hmm. and that might be something the Baja competitors should be concerned about. Okay. Yeah, but but they're not you know they're not harmful or anything like that. They're more an, an annoyance than anything. All right, good to look out for. Bring extra tear offs. Yeah. <laughs> Um, wouldn't it be amazing? They come out of the uh, endurance just covered in a yeah. instead of mud. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I know you mentioned having a lot of dust in Arizona. Uh, for those who uh, were at Mayhem a couple of years ago, they'll they'll remember that it was extremely dusty. Um, we're 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 hoping that one with the the rain that's forecast. Uh, we're hoping that we're going to have a lot more water in the ground. Uh, when, we, when we had mayhem in 2019, we had just come out of about two and a half months of zero rain. Um, so uh, the other thing is, you know, we, we've got, we'll have the water truck again where we've got a better plan for water. Hopefully we don't suck up a frog this time and, and uh, spend a half an hour trying to get the frog back out of the hose. And yeah, we've um, got a strainer on the hose this year. <laughs> yeah. We're in good shape. So, so the water plan should be better. We'll be putting water on the course every day leading up to the event or leading up to dynamic day as well uh, throughout dynamic day and endurance day um, just to help try and keep that dust down. So hopefully it'll be better than it was two years ago. One more, one more note about parking. Um, we, we forgot to talk about trucks and trailers and all that kind of stuff. So I, being a, being a, a past Baja competitor, I know the, uh, the urge to get lined up at four in the morning on, on Thursday to, to get that early engine tech spot. Um, but keep in mind that, you know, we're, we're going to be, you're going to be lining. If you line up, you're going to be lining up on a public road, which is not good. So don't do that. First of all, um, second of all, um, you have two days full of tech. So if you guys have looked at the schedule, you'll see that there's two full days of nothing but tech. So really that being, you know, first in line at engine tech is, is really not all that critical anymore because of having that second full day of tech. So moral of the story, don't line up. If you do, we'll, we'll send you around the block um, and put you at the back of the line. Cause we just can't, we can't block traffic on a, on a public road in the middle of downtown Louisville. And there's really no benefit. The other thing that we want to mention is, um, and th- this will be on in the welcome packet as well. If you get onto Third Street, um, I don't think most of you should, um, because I would assume that that Google Maps or, or Waze or whatever you're using is going to take you down I-65 um, to get to the site. But if you end up on Third Street, we'll have signs out there. But make sure that you do not uh, go under the underpasses. Um, there's one going north and one going south. If you try and go under them, especially if you've got one of the big Penske's. Um, you will likely come out with a, a roofless trailer. We'll have signs, but like I said, if you get on Third Street, make sure you go up and over the bridge. Um, if you're coming from the south side, it'll be a right-hand turn. And if you're coming from the north side, from downtown, you'll want to turn left on the Eastern Parkway. There's lots of signs everywhere that tells you don't go through here if you're over height, but just wanted to make sure everyone's aware of that. And again, it'll be in the welcome packet as well. We don't want anybody to rip the roof off the trailer. So let's talk a little bit more about the, the, the registration and the uh, logistics. Of course, things are a little different this year because of, uh, you know, obviously the COVID uh, uh, situation as it is. So, so tell us what are, first, what, what do team members have to look out for responsibilities every day? Yeah. So I, I think that, you know, for those of you who were uh, followed Arizona a little bit, the COVID policies are going to basically mirror what was done in Arizona. Um, so from a, from a registration standpoint, first of all, I guess, um, at, you know, everything is going to be, and Kaylee can jump in here and correct me if I'm wrong, but everything is going to be the same as usual with the fast track roster process. Um, and then with, with COVID on top of that, um, there's going to be an additional uh, waiver that we need to have you guys sign ahead of time each day. Um, and th- there's a link to that. You can download it and go ahead and print that out and sign it before you get on site so that when you guys get there, all you have to do is hand that piece of paper over. Additionally, there's going to be uh, a temperature check at the gate. Um, each day coming in or as you come in the site, if you come in and out multiple times each day, you'll, you'll do that every time, I think. Um, and then the other thing that um, we're, we're, we're introducing in Louisville that wasn't in Arizona um, is there will be an RFID wristband um, that gets scanned at the entrance to the site, as well as, I believe, tech. Is that correct, Kaylee? Yes, I believe so. 
Okay. But that RFID wristband is what we're going to call those the smart bands. I think they have a name to differentiate them from the RFID tag that goes on the car during the endurance race. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so for anybody who was at Arizona followed us. We gave different color wristbands every day for this process. Um, this is just one way to reduce that uh, that type of, I guess, administrative work. And now we just have to scan your wristband. So very similar to the student competitor wristband you will receive, you need to keep this wristband on all week. Yeah. And, and I guess just to build off of the COVID stuff, um, you know, the expectation and, and the requirement is going to be that while you're on site, you must wear a mask. Um, I think from what, what I've heard from Kaylee and, and Jason about Arizona is that went over really well. Um, so we just ask that we continue that trend um, with, with Louisville. Yeah, it's good to keep practicing. You know, we've learned a lot over the last year about how to reduce your exposure, right? To uh, infectious diseases or whatever, you know, keep doing all the good things that you guys have learned. We're going to recommend the distancing, the masks, everything we've been learning and practicing over the last year is going to apply at Baja Louisville. Nothing new, nothing uh, additional. It just kind of uh, uh, relatively the same stuff if you go into any other kind of venue or business at this point. So, and uh, let's be honest, depending on the weather, you're probably going to want a mask on anyways, so you're not eating any dirt. So, <laughs> uh, through the process. But uh, so it's, it's kind of nice. It's like we're conditioned for this already at Baja events, right? Yeah, although I will say at Arizona, having a mask on still didn't stop eating the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> True. It still made its way in there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if, if uh, Louis will be as dusty. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, we, it will be. It will <laughs> yeah, be. Okay. <laughs> Almost inevitably. Good to know. Sandblasting, here we go. <laughs> uh, first of all, any fast track issues we need to know about going into the event? Uh, I don't think there's any issues. It's just more of a reminder for student teams to make sure you're printing off your fast track roster off of the SAE.org website. Your team captain or advisor has that responsibility. Also, it is their responsibility to make sure every student is signing it. Um, we won't have uh, the, the handwritten in additions as we typically would see in a normal year. So um, just a reminder on that as well. And also to reiterate um, on the COVID forms to that you do need to print those and bring those. Uh, I know they had a few at the at the front desk um, in Arizona and actually ran out at one point. So please, uh, if you and 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 if you want to get in as quickly as possible at the beginning of the day, definitely make sure that is signed and ready. As uh, I'm actually setting the print mine right now to make sure I have them in my in my pack in. So I understand there's a new award that's going to be uh, available at this competition. There, there is. We have a sponsor, SeaTech, who wants to award teams for their organization and their shop cleanliness. So if you go to the Baja SAE Facebook page, they just put out a, a reminder about the entry conditions uh, for this award. Uh, you need to use their hashtag, show some pictures of your shop. The, I guess representatives from SeaTech will be on site at Baja SA Louisville, have a clean paddock, be organized, and uh, you might just win $2,500. So I, I, to me, it seems like pretty low barrier to entry. So you may as well uh, get some pictures. It's easy money, right? Yeah, easy money is hard to come by, and it seems like there's some right here, so take advantage. I know. There you go. Take advantage of that, of course. So, of course, we have Arizona behind us, and, uh, of course, I heard some interesting stories from tech this year. Um, is, is What are some issues that, uh, that we heard about from Arizona we want to try to avoid for the students uh, coming up here in Louisville? So, yeah, overall, I think, you know, Arizona, from what we heard from Kaylee and Jason Rounds, was that, that Arizona went over really well. Um, we, we asked them last week in our, our weekly call just to give us an update on if there's any lessons learned that, that we needed to take away from Arizona and apply to Louisville um, in the next couple of weeks here. Uh, but other than that, we also asked some questions about tech and just how things went there. And, and Jason you know, basically said that overall it went pretty well. It was just um, really there was a lot of cars that um, were, be were being built in the parking lot more or less, uh, which you know happens at Baja. We understand that, especially given the fact that you know, teams have been locked out of their shops for, you know, the better part of a year or more now. Um, but the biggest thing that, you know, for tech is always that I, that, that I ask and, and tell everyone is make sure you read the rules. If you want to pass tech on the first try, that's really the, the biggest piece of advice you, you can get is read the rules um, and don't just have your team captain read the rules. Have everybody read the rules. 
print out multiple copies of the text sheet, give them to every member of your team that's going to be on site, and have them all walk around that car, check off the items, make sure that you all agree that that you know you all agree that that rule was being met. Because sometimes the rules are are not as clear and easy to understand um, as others, and so um, having multiple multiple people look at them really helps. So let's talk about the track itself. We talked about the area a little bit, but what what are we going to expect from our, our dynamic events, for instance? The the Drop Forge Proving Grounds is a, a really fascinating place to have a Baja SE event. And, and the reason for that is because we have a wide variety of terrain. You might think, oh, we're in the city. It's going to be just one thing or the other thing. But there's, it, in addition to having a, Structures that were torn down years ago, it's also been used as kind of a, a dumping area for sand, dirt, uh, rocks, concrete, you know, you name it. If it's been used in construction at some point, it's been dumped on our site. So we actually have uh, sections of the, of the track that are all entirely in deep sand. We have sections of the track that are in mud. Some are on hard packed dirt. Some's in grass. There's gravel, loose gravel, bigger gravel. There's uh, baseball sized rocks that will cover entire sections of the track that you'll get to drive over. There's concrete, asphalt, you know, you name it, we, we've got it. Uh, with the exception of elevation change, we don't have a whole lot of that. We did make some changes to the track from the last time we ran Baja cars here in 2019. Uh, we are, there is a large pile of dirt and gravel kind of mixed together in the center of the site that we're going to go up and over. So our hill climb will be on that pile. You can see it on the, the satellite view. And actually, if you use Google Earth, there's a up-to-date view. I guess they took another satellite image of it in 2020 after we had built the track for the canceled Baja SAE 2020 Louisville. So you'll be able to see where the, where the track winds up and over that hill in the middle of the site. A couple other things to mention, I guess, most of, most of you probably know we're doing an acceleration event, we're doing a hill climb event, we're doing S&T, and we're doing maneuverability. Those are going to be our four. They should be fun. They should be fun for you guys. Um, so Alex and I mentioned earlier that we're design judges. Uh, we didn't think it was fair to judge all of the, uh, the students on their Baja design and not have track design that we could stand behind. So, you know, we've set objectives. We set these higher competition program level objectives about what we want the track to do. And then we've cascaded that down into defined metrics for each of our, our events. So some examples of that, you know, we, we have a defined endurance track length. We want it to be, you know, just a, just a hair over one and a half miles. We've got a minimum width that we try to hit for every section of our track. And that's based upon the average track width of a Baja car. Uh, we've got minimum tow lane widths and location so that if your car does break down, we can get you in and out efficiently. We've got minimum vehicle speeds we want to hit. We've got maximum vehicle speeds we want to hit, which are based upon analytical models that uh, we generated at Baja Louisville. The guys at, at RIT help us. We have a lot of volunteers from RIT. We have volunteers from University of Michigan that help us. Their analytical models they play into those top speed values that we predict we'll be able to hit. Uh, and, we, and we've got a, an average speed for a top 20% car is another metric that we try to design our track for. So, th you know, this track that you guys are going to be racing on isn't just us going out and saying, oh, that looks right. Yeah, it looks right. No, there's a little bit of engineering behind it. So hopefully that translates into a, a really fun and, uh, fulfilling test for these Baja cars that you've spent the last year building. Acceleration is going to be your typical 100 or 150 foot, depending on uh, uh, what we see. We I, I think we did 150 in Arizona, so we might do 100, but I think the organizers prefer the longer one, so you might see 150 again. Acceleration will be on pavement. Your hill climb is going to be on the the hill in the center of the site. We're going to do the best we can to prevent degradation of hill climb as the day goes on uh, but your dynamic day strategy should definitely take into account the fact that that's not a hard packed surface like acceleration it is dirt and gravel and there's a good chance that it will wear in as the day goes on s and t is going to be uh in the northern section of our our dynamic site uh, so it'll 
drive through some of the sand area, some of the rock area, some of the, the mud area. We're going to be building all, all new obstacles for that. I would say it's probably going to have a maybe 20% of the track is going to be similar to what we ran in 2019 for our, our practice. Uh, maneuverability, however, is going to be very similar to what we ran last time we were on site. Uh, that's going to be on the southern side of our site, and it's going to be, um, it, it, again, it's going to be another one that uses utilizes multiple terrain. We want to see what these cars can do. I guess our idea of maneuverability is that it should test the maneuverability of the car. You know, what what can it do on pavement? What can it do on rocks? What can it do on dirt? How's your turning radius in a you know, off camber turn, on camber turn. It's an off-road vehicle. It needs to be able to turn off-road. So that's that's what you can expect to see from our maneuverability event. So once again, just to clean up a little bit of logistics here, uh, again, lunches will not be provided, but you have a lot of options around there. Uh, also for the students, will there be uh, t-shirts on sale in addition to the sponsored DS uh, SolidWorks event shirts? Uh, that's a good question, but uh, no, there will not be t-shirts available for sale. Um, again, this is, like Brad mentioned earlier, trying to simplify down the competition as part of it. And then keeping in mind, too, that originally when we were when we were planning out this event, um, there was the, the, the contingency that we were going to be running this wave style event. And so it was going to, trying to figure out quantities and all that kind of stuff early enough on was going to be tricky. So we decided not to go that route, but I do believe Kaylee that, you know, SolidWorks will be bringing their usual t-shirts with them. We will have all the um, shirt sizes, everything pre boxed for students uh, to pick up that registration. Excellent. And of course uh, there's the uh, mandatory team captain and advisors meeting. Is it really that mandatory and why is it important for all teams to be represented at these meetings? Yeah. So you'll see on the schedule that we have, um, Currently, there's a meeting scheduled every day. I think I just talked to Jason Rounds, and we're going to get rid of one of the meetings. Um, uh, we'll, we'll be talking about that tomorrow with, with Kaylee and with the rest of the SAE crew. So be looking for an updated schedule to come out sometime later this week or early next. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the meetings are, are incredibly important um, for your teams to be at because, you know, if there's any last second changes to the schedule or if there's a change in, you know, plans for endurance or dynamic events, whatever, that's where that's where any kind of changes to the original plan um, for the event will get communicated first. Um, and so it's definitely critical that you guys attend those each of those meetings. Um, you know, we, we don't want to keep you there all night long. You know, we're, we're going to keep it to a half an hour or less. Um, so it really won't be that bad, but they're definitely highly valuable. You already mentioned uh, limitations to the parking situation, even for the teams themselves. Uh, What does this mean for spectators being permitted on site? Are they going to be permitted on site? Yeah, so I think you guys are already aware that, uh, you know, spectators this year um, in Arizona, they were not allowed because of COVID. And we're following that same policy here as well. So, you know, there's there's the team limit. I think it's 11 students and one advisor. Um, so that's, that's, it's going to be a closed site and that's going to be who's allowed on site. Are you still accepting volunteers? And, and if so, how can they apply? We are definitely accepting volunteers. You know, I think in Arizona, we had a lot of, a lot of teams that brought extra students beyond their 11 team member limit, um, that were there as volunteers. So, um, feel free to definitely do that. Just, just know that they're not a part of your team. They are volunteering for the event to help make it run, but it's still a good opportunity for them to, you know, experience Baja. And, and if they've never been to a competition, they can see what it's all about and get a feel for that. Um, so that's definitely an option. You would do all that through the Baja SAE.net website. Um, and yeah, so that we're, we're still looking for volunteers. We won't say no to, to help. <laughs> Well, Alex, Brad, I'm really looking forward to uh, getting out there to Louisville and see what you have in store for us here uh, and, 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 and see, see these, these interesting grounds you've been describing to us at the beginning of the show here, here at, uh, at the university. You know, any final words, any, any advice, any, any tips uh, going out the door here? I don't have any good tips and tricks or advice other than to uh, bring the best Baja car that you can. I'm really looking forward to to having this race at the Drop Forge Proving Grounds. You know, every event is going to fit into our Proving Grounds theme. It's going to test different aspects of your Baja design. Uh, overall, I think it's going to be an extremely fun track and extremely fun event for students, Baja teams. Uh, it's going to be an extremely fun track. It's going to be an extremely fun event for for all the students involved. I think Brad summed it up pretty well. Um, it's it's good that Baja is finally back, and I'm excited that we're going to be in Louisville. Um, like I said, this has been a, a dream of a lot of hours in Louisville for, you know, 
a long, long time. Um, so we're glad to finally see it come to, come to realization. Um, and we hope that everyone enjoys their, their time in Louisville. Sounds great. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for the, taking the time for this and, and, and giving a little preview of what's in store for everybody in Louisville. So I'm hoping you guys are listening to this, whether it be uh, here in advance or maybe you're in the car on the way right now. We're waiting for you in Louisville. Uh, so in the meantime, if you have not yet, I'm hoping you've downloaded that Baja SAE app. So you do get all those updates as we talked about. And of course, keep an eye through the news feed over there at BajaSAE.net. And if you haven't already, wherever you listen to your podcast, please subscribe to Shop Talk, the Baja SAE podcast. And uh, so you do not miss an episode and an update as we uh, put information through here, you know, whether it be postseason or getting yourself ready for the uh, 2022 season as uh, information starts rolling out there. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Until next time, please stay safe out there. Thanks for listening to Baja SAE Shop Talk. As always, we want to hear from you. So email BajaSAE at SAE.org. The show notes for this episode, as well as all others, can be found at www.BajaSAE.net slash podcast. Stay safe, and we'll catch you next episode. How about we put in at the beginning or somewhere about the pronunciation of Louisville? Oh, have I been saying it wrong? It's a it's kind of a joke in Louisville. There's there's actually t-shirts and stuff you can get that have like six different pronunciations for the for the Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's Louis, acceptable... Louisville is one of them. <laughs> yeah, there's an acceptable native way and that's with as little effort as possible, right? Louisville. <laughs>